All right, so let's take a look at one of the more fundamental concepts from information theory. It's what's called the channel capacity of a channel. All the capacity of a channel is, is a number. So the capacity is just a number, and it tells us the maximum data rate or the maximum number of bits per second that can be transmitted over the channel with arbitrarily low error rate. Sometimes this uh, term arbitrarily low error rate, people refer to that as reliable communication. So if I can communicate reliably, that basically says I'm kind of in control of how accurately I can um, transmit data from point A to point B. So if I know the channel capacity, that basically tells me kind of an upper limit on the data rate that I should transmit at. Um, if I can transmit at that rate, we say that we are you know, achieving capacity on the channel, and that's basically as fast as I can transmit while maintaining some desired probability of bit error rate. How do you compute channel capacity? Well, channel capacity is usually a function of the channel characteristics. So it's usually a function of channel bandwidth, how much signal to noise ratio you have, maybe some other state information about the channel. So if you know the channel characteristics, you might be able to go compute the capacity of the channel. As the bandwidth increases, typically capacity increases. As signal to noise ratio increases, typically capacity increases. So it behaves, you know, kind of how you think it would behave. High data rates imply you know, lots of SNR or lots of bandwidth. Low data rates imply you know, lower signal to noise ratio or less bandwidth, things like that. What's interesting about this uh, quantity is you know, this basically came about in you know, the late 40s. A person called Claude Shannon, a very important person, published a mathematical theory of communication in 1948. And that's where he derived and developed a lot of these concepts from first principles. And in that work where he kind of came up with this idea of capacity, he proved that as long as you are operating within the channel capacity, meaning you're not trying to transmit at a data rate faster than the channel capacity, then you can con construct forward error correction codes to get the error rate down to any arbitrary level. So if you want an error rate of 10 to the negative six, you can get it. If you want an error rate of 10 to the negative 10, you can get it. What about 10 to the negative 50? you can get it. So there exist forward error correction codes, meaning something that I do at the transmitter and then do it to the data such that the receiver can decode things. There's no feedback mechanism. I just do things blindly at the transmitter to encode and error correct the data before I send it out that ensures arbitrary levels of performance. The catch being you better be within the channel capacity. So operating within kind of the good zone, obviously, is an important thing to be doing. All right, let's look at this in a little bit more detail. Very closely related to the channel capacity is what's called the channel error exponent. So let's talk a little bit first how we're going to transmit data and put some kind of math behind that. So we're going to assume that we're kind of setting, sending data at a message rate of RM bits per second. Typically in this class for digital comms, we've been transmitting data, a symbol of data, every unit of time. And for now, let's go ahead and call that T sub S. So every T sub S units of time, I go ahead and send a signal. And that signal could contain one or many bits of information. I'm gonna transmit a whole bunch of symbols, a total of N of them, over a total time of T. So just imagine they're sending signal, 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 signal. Over time, I'm gonna send a total of N of them over a total time of t. If each one of those signals represents little m bits of information, that's kind of the notation we've been using in the class so far, then I have transmitted a total of n times little m bits over a time of t seconds. So that is n times m over t bits per second. So that's my data rate and how I can parameterize it into some of these quantities, little m, t, and t sub s that we've been working with this semester. So what is the channel error exponent? It turns out that there's this quantity that's called E of R of M. So E is the exponent. The functional notation of R of M indicates that the channel exponent, which again is a number, is a function of the rate that you're transmitting at. The interesting thing about this channel ex error exponent is it tells us how we can bound the probability of bit error rate. The probability of bit error rate is always less than or equal to e to the minus capital T times the channel error exponent. 
One thing that's important is that this channel error exponent is not a function of how long that you transmit t. So the only dependence in this bound on the length of time you transmit is right here, the t right here. So that's kind of interesting. So if I know the channel error exponent, let's say the channel ex error exponent is, I don't know, 1.5, then I can basically choose how long that I want to transmit and then t times 1.5, the negative that raised, raised e to that, I'm gonna get some number. And I can make this number as small as I want basically by choosing for how long do I want to transmit data. And conversely, you know, kind of similarly, how long do I maybe want to wait to be able to decode the data? You know, the complexity might be rising as a function of capital T. So just by examining this bound right here, we see something kind of important related to the channel error exponent. As long as the channel error exponent is a positive number, I'm kind of good right here. That product will be negative, e to the negative number will be a very small number, and then I can let my time duration, t, get arbitrarily big to drive probability of bit error arbitrarily small. So let's think about that. The important thing there in that discussion was that the channel error exponent is positive. This cartoon right here kind of shows kind of a notional cartoon sketch of how the channel error exponent behaves as a function of rate. So here is rate r of m, here is a plot of the channel error exponent, and the kind of blue curve there in a cartoon sense shows that as the rate that you're transmitting at increases, the error exponent decreases, which basically says, you know, small data rates, hey, transmitting at a small data rate, that's easy. I'm gonna have a larger error exponent, which means a smaller bit error rate. And then as I get bigger and bigger and bigger, larger data rates are tougher to achieve my error exponent gets smaller, which says I may need to transmit capital T longer and longer and longer. One very interesting thing happens. Right here, there's a transition. Over here, the channel error exponent was positive. Over here, it's negative. Once it goes negative, that's no good. From the previous chart, that bound, I would now have e to a positive number, which means that my error rate is kind of blowing up, so that's no good. Here's the interesting thing, and we're not proving any of this, we're just stating it. Where you transition from a positive error exponent to a negative error exponent happens at the capacity of the channel. So that's why it's so important that our data rate be less than C. We have to be operating within the channel capacity. As long as I'm doing that and I'm on this side of things, life is good and I can drive error as low as I'd like. Once I transition into this region, then my error rate basically becomes unbounded. All right, so that's it in terms of kind of introducing the concept of capacity and describing its behavior um, and its relationship to this channel error exponent. Obviously, it's very important that we operate within the capacity of the channel. In the next video, let's actually go ahead and look at how you can compute the channel capacity for the AWGN channel. It turns out for the AWGN channel, there's a fairly straightforward and simple expression that you can just write down that lets us compute the channel capacity. So we'll look at that in the next video.